let's see about inevitable and incomplete abortion in both these cases inevitable and incomplete abortion the ovum or the fetus has already separated from the wall of uterus and it will definitely be expelled so when the products of conception have not been expelled it is called as inevitable abortion the products of conception has not been expelled outside but they have been separated from the uterine wall it is called inevitable abortion whereas if the products of conception are partially expelled the products of conception are partially expelled and partially retained then it is said to be incomplete abortion so this is the difference between the two inevitable and incomplete abortion in both these cases the products of conception has already separated from the uterine wall and they are to be expelled out but if the products of conception has not been expelled out yet it is called inevitable abortion if they have been partially expelled and partially retained then it is called as com- incomplete abortion now let's see the clinical features first will be the symptoms symptoms as in any abortion include history of amenorrhea lower abdominal pain which can be moderate to severe and bleeding per vaginam which is usually very heavy also there can be history of expulsion of products of conception in case of incomplete abortion next comes the signs in signs there can be tachycardia and hypotension which are suggestive of the features of shock which depends on the amount of bleeding so these can be due to hemorrhagic shock next on per abdomen the uterine size corresponds to the period of gestation in case of inevitable abortion whereas the uterine size is less than the period of gestation in case of incomplete abortion because in incomplete abortions the products of conception are expelled out partially this is per abdomen finding now coming to per vaginum examination the cervical os is dilated and the product of conception may be felt in the uterine cavity or in the cervical canal and in case of incomplete abortion the products of conception may be protruding out through the cervical canal next for confirmation of diagnosis it is by ultrasound this ultrasound confirms if the products of conception are expelled fully or retained within the cavity or in the cervical canal now coming to the management
So, most often the products of conception get expelled by itself. But if there is severe bleeding or persistent bleeding, then we should intervene. So, check curettage is done. to remove any retained bits of products of conception and to ensure complete emptying of the uterine cavity. Now coming to the general management, first IV line is started with NS or RL, normal saline or ringle lactate. If the bleeding is severe, then blood should be given that is transfused. And parental antibiotics should be given as prophylaxis. So, for this, usually one gram of injection ampicillin is given IV after test dose. Then IV sedation can be given by injection pentazosin or injection promethazine. If she has not got a shot of TT already, then injection TT should be given, tetanus toxide. Next step would be, the management differs for either the cervix is sufficiently dilated or the cervix is not sufficiently dilated. The management differs for both the cases. So, the evacuation of uterus differs based on if the cervix is sufficiently dilated or not sufficiently dilated. If the uterus is sufficiently dilated, then the products of conception can be removed out gently with the sponge holding forceps. And twisting it Twitting, twisting the products of conception with it or manual vacuum aspiration can be used for emptying the uterine cavity. MVA stands for manual vacuum aspiration. This manual vacuum aspiration is a safe procedure and it ensures complete evacuation. If MVA is not available, if MVA is not available, then we go either for DNC dilatation and curettage or suction and evacuation.
but these two have a risk of uterine perforation which is not seen with manual vacuum aspiration so this is the management if the cervix is sufficiently dilated what if the cervix is not sufficiently dilated even then the same man manual vacuum aspiration can be used and the cervix can be dilated with different sizes of cannula which are provided with the manual vacuum aspiration kit the same way if mv is not available then dilatation and curettage or suction evacuation should be done so what differs here is we should first dilate the cervix with different sizes of cannula which is available with the manual vacuum aspiration kit and then do the manual vacuum aspiration next is the post evacuation care the post evacuation care includes continuing the oral antibiotics then analgesics and the female should be encouraged to have oral fluids initially then solids and uh, she should be counseled about the family planning methods various methods available and pregnancy should be planned after 5 to 6 months if she is rh negative then she should be given anti d injection so this is the post evacuation care and that is all about the inevitable and incomplete abortion thank you